So I wanted to transition to a question I see on the the roadmap, the Ouroboros BFT. What exactly mm. is BFT? What does that stand for? And what does that mean to the end user and the exchange in this situation? Sure. Yeah. So Ouroboros BFT is a, uh, a variety. It's, it's, it's in the Ouroboros family. Uh, and it's a very, very simple um, version of Ouroboros. The, I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail about what it actually is in a second. But the reason that we have it here is because it helps us with this transition between between Byron and, and Shelley. And because in Byron, we are using Ouroboros Classic, and in Shelley, we're using Ouroboros Genesis. And these you know, are different. Um, uh, they're in the Ouroboros family, but they're, they're nevertheless you know, um, substantially different. Um, and so having this thing in between, just for technical reasons, helps us with, with the transition. Rather than going straight from one to the other, by going via this intermediate point, it turns out to be a lot easier and a lot smoother for us to, to, to manage this transition. So it's not that anybody particularly wants BFT, Ouroboros BFT on its own. I mean, it does have its uses. But what we're using it for here is to smooth the migration. But let me tell you what it is. So BFT stands for Byzantine Fault Tolerance. And this is a, a class of consensus algorithms. There are many different um, BFT algorithms published by different people. And Ouroboros BFT is a kind of minimalistic version of Ouroboros that fits into that family uh, pattern of um, Byzantine fault tolerant uh, consensus algorithms. And something that characterizes BFT consensus algorithms is that they tend to be for, well, they, they usually have, uh, they can only survive one third adversarial um, uh, stake, um, whereas more robust things like Ouroboros Classic or Ouroboros Genesis can withstand you know, up to 50% or, you know, just below 50% uh, adversarial uh, stake. Um, the, another thing that they give you is they tend to be quite fast. So they can be useful on their own. Um, that's not what, you know, the, the advantage that we're getting from it here, but um, they are a useful class of algorithm on their own. Um, they're very simple. That's, that's really the big, that's the, that's the thing that we're using it for. Um, by going via a simple thing, it helps us with the transition. So, so in the case of Shelley, it's mm. it's if uh, nodes are not responding correctly or giving information that's faulty, it, not, it may not just be a bad actor, it just may be a faulty system or an electrical issue for a certain number of nodes. This is hardening um, the Cardano platform to prevent a sort of system-wide failure. I, am I understanding that correctly? So not exactly. Let me. I think I should explain about this sort of federation aspect as well. So these BFT algorithms are for... Having a when you have a fixed number of um, uh, like the core nodes that create blocks, um, you know nodes that mint uh, that mint blocks. So I mean, as everybody knows, you know, right now we're running Ouroboros Classic, which is designed to be federated. I mean, sorry, excuse me, which is designed to be distributed ultimately. Um, but you know, the the very first deployment, the Byron deployment uh, of of, of uh, Cardano, was running in a federated setting. Now, BFT algorithms only work in a federated setting. And so that's OK for us as a transition, because you know, we're, we're running Ouroboros Classic in a federated setting. So moving into BFT is still running in a federated setting, but it's much, much simpler. And then we pick up from there with the new Cardano Shelley. And then at the Shelley hard fork, then we move into the properly distributed stake pools, delegation, staking, all the rest of it. So it really is about being something as simple as possible to give us a an easy way of um, doing a transition from the uh, Cardano Byron to Cardano Shelley. Does that explain? Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. So it's 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 the easiest way to transition from classic to Genesis um, in, in exactly. a way that um, there's there's less there's less there are less issues at stake. Um, I understand that. I understand well, that. Charles, do you want to add something here? Yeah, just real briefly. So it, it's an, there's a natural question to ask, why not just go straight from Ouroboros Classic to Ouroboros Genesis? Why do we need to use this intermediate algorithm? And uh, part of the reason is that we're actually re-implementing all of our code bases. So we're replacing the legacy core and we're replacing it with a completely new Haskell code base and a completely new Rust code base. Uh, so it kind of puts you in a dilemma. Do you uh, re-implement all that legacy code and uh, you know, re-implement Ouroboros Classic, but in the new code base? Or do you go with something simpler in transition? 
So it actually saved quite a bit of engineering effort going to Ouroboros PFT as opposed to re-implementing Ouroboros Classic with the new Haskell and the new Rust code base. So that's uh, one reason for the transition. Uh, there's also potentially some use cases later on, uh, post Shelly era with Ouroboros BFT. So it's useful to have that code laying around. And uh, overall, it's just a nice protocol to have implemented. So, uh, it, you know, the hope here is to try to do things the right way with good principles, but also at the same time, try to do things as quickly as we can. And uh, Orboros PFT allows us to speed up the implementation time and speed up the uh, deployment towards Shelly. Uh, so it's a good protocol. It's a very simple protocol. Simplicity is nice in engineering because less things can go wrong. Uh, and it's uh, going to be a great bridge protocol to help us get to um, Shelly and Ouroboros Genesis. Yes, it it has it has significantly reduced the amount um, of work that we have had to do in the in the Shelly code base because it means that the Shelly code base only has to deal with BFT and Ouroboros Preos with Genesis, whereas otherwise we would have had to have, as Charles said, have it work with Ouroboros Classic and Genesis, Preos Genesis. And that is a lot more um, because those are both, you know, sophisticated um, consensus algorithms. So by going for starting, because, it, because you have to cross a hard fork, whenever you cross a hard fork, you have to have the code understand both. Otherwise, the hard fork doesn't, doesn't work. Um, so by by having one side be simple, it means there's there's a lot less to do overall, and that that significantly uh, reduces the the complexity and the uh, the time to development and the the testing that we have to do.